God said to Abraham, I want your son, I want you to take your son, your only son, Isaac, up to the Mount Moriah, and I want you to sacrifice him to me. Abraham said, God, that's the thing I love the most in this world. He's a miracle child. You gave him to us in our old age, and now you want me to lay him on an altar and raise a knife and stab him and burn him? And, and, and how can I do this? How could any father do that? But Abraham obeyed God because he understood the power of the blood covenant. He really believed that if he did it, God would raise him back up from the ashes. That's why he, he knew the power of the blood covenant. And when he raised the knife and was, a, was about to stab his son Isaac in the heart, an angel stopped him and God spoke and said, now I know you don't have to kill him. You don't have to sacrifice your son. And God was thinking in his infinite mind, I'll take care of that sacrifice. You don't have to, but I will. I'll send one with a blood covenant that will pay the price. But I wanted to know, would you give me your best? Because in the blood covenant is you give your best and God gives his best. It's really something when you understand that God said, in blessing now, I will bless you. And God said, I swear by my own name that as long as you have seed on the earth, as long as you live, your seed will possess the land. And he made him unbelievable promises that continue to this day. It all started, the Bible started, the covenant that we're in through Jesus Christ, it all started with a blood covenant. Jesus said, when he entered into the upper room with his disciples for the Last Supper, he said in Luke, the 23rd chapter, he said, this cup is the cup of the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you. Do you understand what he was saying? He was saying, we're entering into a blood covenant and the old covenant is the Old Testament and it's been all about the keeping of the law and the rituals and legalism and you had to earn it and you had to work for it and you had to deserve it and it was and if you messed up you could take the blood of an animal and the blood of an animal would never take away your failure it would just roll it over to a new year but Jesus said this time on this cross this day this is my cup this is the cup of my covenant this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. And we just read over that. And we don't understand. He was saying to them, they fully understood blood covenants. And he said, I'm entering in this, this cup is my blood. This bread is my body. And I'm entering into this. And what I want you to see is simply this. In this story, there's something remarkable that I read. I chose the fact to tell you today and start out in 1 Samuel because we see something beautiful and powerful in the covenant that Jonathan, the king's son, made with David. The Bible said that Jonathan said to David, and David said to Jonathan, let's make a covenant. And they entered into a blood covenant, and when they did, because the word covenant means cut, watch this. Jonathan does something strange. He takes his robe off, and he hands it to David. And then he takes his garment off, it says in another place, if you keep reading, it says he took his garment off, and he handed it to David. Possessions. And in another place, it said he took his sword, his weapons, and he gave them to David. It's really a powerful thing when you understand what, is that, what that really is about. Because the robe spoke, it was not just a garment, a regular clothing. It, was, it identified Jonathan as the king's son. It was one that wherever he went, people would look and see that particular robe and it meant royalty and it spoke of his position. It spoke of who he was. It spoke of the power and authority that he had and really what Jonathan was saying is I am the rightful heir. My father Saul is king of Israel, but I want you to take my position. I want you to take 
the authority and the position that I have, I'm giving you my robe. And that came through a blood covenant. That's what Jesus Christ has done for you and me. He says, when, when the king's son, the king of kings' son, Jesus Christ, went to the cross, the first thing he did is he traded positions and he said, I'm giving you this place of position so that you don't come before the throne as a beggar, but you come as a child of the king. You come as a daughter of the king, a son of the king. You come clothed in my righteousness. You come with boldness and authority because of what the blood has done. Not only that, but he said, I'm giving you my garment. And that speaks of possessions. That speaks of meeting the needs. The blood covenant not only changes your position, the blood covenant not only gives you authority to walk boldly into the throne of grace because of the shed blood, but it also says that he will supply your needs, that the possessions that I have through the cross, what are those possessions? Through the cross, through the blood covenant, there is healing. Through the blood covenant, there is deliverance for the mind. There is peace. There is joy. There is healing for broken places in our life. All of these possessions, they come through the riches of the cross. They come because Jesus gives us his righteousness and gives us a position that we can receive freely the grace and the forgiveness and the healing and the miracles of God. He gives us all of his possessions. In my name, you can heal the sick. In my name, you can recover. In my name, you can see miracles. And then, as if that wasn't enough, he takes his sword, Jonathan did, and he gave it to David, making the blood covenant. What a picture. What a picture. What he was really saying was, from this day forward, since we've entered into this sacred blood covenant, I give you my sword means this, that whoever fights you, fights me. Whoever comes against you and tries to destroy you, they're trying to destroy me. And just like they attack you, I will come and I will fight with you and I will fight for you because the battle is not yours alone, but I'm going to fight it with you. And the blood covenant says, I not only give you pos position, I not only give you royal position and possessions, I supply all of your needs, healing, health, blessing, success, goodness, joy, all that you need. But the Blood covenant says through the giving of the sword, it simply says, I give you my power. I give you my name. I give you the Holy Spirit. I give you the blood and I give you my sword. I give you my word. And when you speak it and when you enforce it, the blood covenant stands behind it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you can get notifications on new posts and live streams. Be sure to share this video with a friend. You never know how you can send the Word of God right when somebody needs to hear it. And you can use your social influence for good, for the glory of God. Thanks again. Share it with a friend. And I really appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.